Hey guys, this is the one and only Sonic Ranger back with the final video review of Epic Proportions of the brand new just released Marvel Legends X-Men slash Juggernaut Build-A-Figure series with the Build-A-Figure Juggernaut. So before we get to all that, I want to go ahead and do something that I've never done before because I've never actually completed a Marvel Legends series in video review form. That being said, this is pretty much a homage to the late Glenn Webb and the way he does his uh, reviews. So I'm going to do myself a very own, my top eight of this series. And that being said, this line consists of eight action figures for the Build-A-Figure, which is Juggernaut. So, wow, it was quite a trippy one. But I think I've classified it down to... The worst all the way to the best. But before I do that, I have one honorable mention to get out of the way. So let's get to it. Here we go. And the honorable mention goes to none other than the Onslaught. That's right. We finally got our classic Onslaught action figure. There's no tripping out with a second phase figure like we got with Toy Biz. This is the real deal here. Classic as all can be with the Magneto helmet and the black face with the blue eyes. Perfect win. I'm so glad to have this a part of my collection. Finally in its true form and not of that of the Red Skull. So with honorable mentions out of the way, here is the lowest of the low, and that is Jean Grey. Coming in at number 8, this figure is an overall mess. While I do give props to Hasbro for the clean paint apps at least, the fact that this figure cannot stand for anything is the most despised thing that I could possibly come out of with this whole entire action figure. I mean, just that alone is obviously just the fatal flaw of this figure and the whole reason why she is not worth being a part of this series at all. But that's just my opinion. Your opinion will be different. Number seven, here we have Mr. Anonymous, otherwise known as Havoc. Havoc is is an okay figure. He's not as bad as Gene. But having said that, even though this figure does have accessories, there's not much going on here in the terms of paint application and just the overall styling of this figure just really doesn't hit the right place with me. My prototype figure looked a heck of a lot better, but that being said, there are going to be some changes from the prototype to the actual release figure, but my overall experience with this figure has been quite the questionable one. No puns intended, but that's just the way it is sometimes. Sometimes you just don't know what to think of a figure. Coming in at number six is Iceman. Now, this figure is a really good one and definitely recommended by me. And I love the fact that he's all clear plastic, so cool. And the fact that he's got silver paint for that nice metallic sheen to give the nice ice effect off of his chest is pretty cool. But they didn't go all attention into that. I mean, the legs don't have it, the arms don't have it, and even the head. Having said that, though, the real problem I got with this figure is that he has no accessories. It would have been nice if he came with an ice effect blast or something, but... It just didn't happen. I guess it just couldn't fit into the budget with Hasbro and their $20 price range. So that's the reason why this figure is low on the scale. Moving on. I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this one. But coming in at number 5 is Wolverine. Now I've got nothing against this outfit. This is definitely one of the cool outfits. The, it's the original outfit. So that's not my problem. What my problem is with this figure and what makes him number 5 instead of number 4. Is the fact that his accessories don't make any sense. We've got hands that are interchangeable with other hands that are in the same sculpt that do not have claws. I get it. But having said that, the fact that Hasbro did not glue down these claws and they are pretty much removable, all six of them, makes no point for them to actually have any alterations with an interchangeable feature with this figure. It, it just doesn't make any sense at all. I would have preferred if Wolverine actually had an alternate head where he's got like a snarling look getting ready to pounce on an enemy or something. That would have made better sense, and that's the reason why this figure is number 5 instead of number 4. Here is Rogue, number 4 on this list. 
I love the Jim Lee outfit. I love the sculpting of this figure. I mean, there is a lot of additional parts that are used for this figure alone. I love the head sculpt. I love the makeup on this figure. She looks really good. Overall, physique is perfect. My only gripe that I got against her, and it's not the fact that she has one accessory, which is an interchangeable right hand. The problem is that all of her separate pieces that are already applied on this figure are very loose and just moving all around, which can be a bit of an irritation, at least in my perspective. So that's the reason why she is down here at number four rather than number three, which was a really, really tough decision with the next figure in line. Are you surprised with this one? Coming in at number three, it's Kitty Pride with her pet dragon, Lucky. This is an overall win in the females department of this wave. I mean, she outclasses Rogue in my favor by so many ways. I love the proportions on this figure. I love her face. It is the best female sculpted face of this wave and it's perfectly painted. It is a pretty, pretty, pretty good job. Not to mention that she does have quite the bit of articulation, that the overall sculpting on this figure is very nice. The suit, while it might be simplistic, it really does pop, and I like the overall belt design. But what I really do like about this figure is two things. One, she comes with the interchangeable head for Onslaught from the Red Skull Wave from Captain America, which I really do appreciate, and it completes the overall classic figure that I so wanted. And number two, her dragon, Lucky, is only being held on her by wrapping his tail around her neck, Instead of a peg in a hole system, which caused really a big disturbance with the old Toy Biz figure. So it's a major improvement that Hasbro really stepped their game up on. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Number two, Cable. There's not much to really talk about this figure. He's an overall win. One of the best figures. Not the best, at least in my favor. You'll find out with number one. But having said that, this figure does come with some big guns. I really do like them. I like the fact that the belt clip is actually removable from the right gun. And... The overall details on this figure, the fact that there's a lot of black washing going on here, especially with the robotic parts, is a phenomenal job. My only disappointment I've got with this whole thing going on here, instead of just the figure, is the fact that my knowledge on Cable has gone to absolutely broke. I know nothing about Cable anymore. It's been almost 20 years since I've watched the X-Men cartoon of the 90s. And that is quite the embarrassment that I had in my video review. And I apologize for that. But anyway, that being said, that's got nothing to do with this. Cable is a must-own figure. I really love this style of Cable. And I really hope to see another Cable figure somewhere down the road from Hasbro before this Infinite series comes to a close. And then we come to number one, Deadpool. Was there any doubt in anybody's mind who was watching this? Wade Wilson has a plethora of accessories. Now, the only drawback to this figure, which is kind of questionable to why he's number one, is the fact he is not associated with the Build-A-Figure concept because he does not come with a Juggernaut Build-A-Figure piece. Instead, to make up for that, Hasbro actually released him with lots and lots of accessories, lots of paint applications on this figure, especially with his grenades here being painted. I really thought those were going to come out just as colorful as his belt, which is just a dull brown. But I'm glad they stepped up their game with this figure, and he is just phenomenal. I mean, this is the Deadpool figure that everyone really needs, and this is where it could end for all I give a care. This Deadpool gives me everything I want from interchangeable heads to lots of guns, his swords. He's got, like, a bazooka with a boxing glove, you know, always breaking the fourth wall. He's campy, corny. He's just a phenomenal character and one of the best. He's number two in my Marvel Universe, number one being my love for Spider-Man. But having said that, there's nothing wrong with finishing second. And that right there is Wade Wilson, a.k.a. Captain Deadpool. No, just Deadpool. And now, with all that out of the way, it's time for your feature presentation, which is the video review of Epic Proportions that you've been anticipating. The long-awaited Juggernaut Build-A-Figure piece. So, 
let's get to it without wasting any more time. It's time to show off all these parts one by one and then we'll get the overall combination going. So here is the head sculpt for Juggernaut which is fantastic. Very cool. He's got yellow teeth by the way. So yeah that's kind of interesting. I, I love all the damage going on with this helmet here. It's been through combat obviously. It's supposed to be metal or something like that. Maybe titanium. But uh, yeah there's also a separate head in there. But it's glued in place so there's no removing that at all. But there you go. There is Juggernaut's head. Here is the left leg for Juggernaut. Uh, not much to talk about here. It is pretty beefy though, and it's got some heft to it and you know, quite some hardness to it as well. It's pretty cool. Here's also the right leg, which is just a mirror sculpt. So not much to talk there, but I'll show you the overall detail on it anyway, just because. Fantastic piece. Fantastic. Here's the crotch piece. Yes, I called it that, but that's what it is anyway. The belt's removable. It's uh, not glued on, which is kind of a drawback, but whatever it is what it is. It's got some nice black washing on it. Perfect. I love that. But not much else going on here. Obviously the big butt, but that's about it. Here is the left arm for Juggernaut. And all these pieces here, as you see, they are actually sculpted. I think they are. Well, this piece is, and this piece is actually removable. It's a separate piece. Everything else is actually sculpted and painted, like these knuckle bits here. These are actually painted. This is actually painted. All the detail that's going on, yeah, it's combat worn. You can see it's been through some battles with the X-Men. I really do like that. Nice attention to detail, Hasbro. Same thing going on with this arm here. There's not much of a difference. It's actually just a mirror sculpt, so that about takes care of that one. And the last piece to the Juggernaut Build-A-Figure is obviously the upper torso. So, it's kind of clean, and I think it's a little too clean for my taste, if you know what I mean. Where there's a lot of combat damage with the actual metal pieces on this figure, and I mean metal pieces. It's obviously plastic. This is just too clean. It, it just doesn't match, but, you know, that's to be expected for the budget that Hasbro's working with here. But I will say, at least he does actually have a nice ab crunch. Something I was not expecting with this Build-A-Figure, but hey, it's there. So, that being said, let's go ahead and do this. So, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to take the lower portion of Juggernaut once I get his belt back on. And the upper portion of Juggernaut and just clip them into place. So there's that. Next portion I'm going to work with is obviously the legs. So we're going to build him down and up. So there's one. Take the other leg. Pop it in. There's two. Doesn't really pop in the place. It just actually just moves in the place. There's no snapping point. You don't hear anything. That said though, when it comes to the arms, they do click in the place as you can hear. There's the other one. And the last portion of the figure, the head, which makes the Juggernaut build a figure. And there we go. That's it. There is Juggernaut. And uh, he's pretty heavy. Weighs about a good maybe four pounds maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm just guessing here. But the overall look on the guy... It's pretty good. Um, I, I really wish that the red here was actually a darker color. Maybe just a, a little dark. Just not this bright red. I mean, I get it. But it, it just doesn't fit what's going on with the combat worn accessories on this figure. You, you know what I'm talking about? But uh, anyway, that said, this is a pretty cool figure. Um... I know a lot of people complain about the helmet piece not being attached to the uh, upper torso of the figure, but if they did that, if Hasbro went that route to make him as accurate as possible, he would have no head articulation. So I'm glad Hasbro didn't go that route. And, you know, really, it's not that noticeable. Unless you start messing with the head going up and down, then you will notice it's not attached. But, again, it's not that big of a deal. 
And this figure just overall being my first actual completed series of a video review. I, I love it. I, I just... I really can't complain about this character or this figure. I, I really do love what Hasbro has to offer here. I only wish, as a gripe, that maybe they could have done a little more combat damage to his suit. But having said that, for what it is, it is one of the better Build-A-Figures that we got out of 2016. If not the best build a figure that we got out of 2016 from Hasbro's Marvel Legends series. So let's do some uh, articulation points before we get to the size comparisons to wrap up this video review. So that said, let's do it. He does have a ball jointed head so you can get some really good tilt on this guy especially with his what's supposed to be indestructible helmet piece. You can go around a complete rotation as you can see. Goes up about that much. He goes down just a little bit, not much, you know, the helmet does get in the way. Anyway, that said, ball jointed shoulders go up about that much. They do go around, complete 360 with some nice ratcheting. Yeah, earthquake, earthquake. That's a pretty strong ratchet. Bicep rotation, single jointed elbows. I guess that's to be expected with this big guy, so it makes sense. He has rotation at the hands. He does actually have a hinge joint to allow some inward and outward movement. But thanks to the sculpting, it's going to be hindered just a bit. There is an ab crunch like I showed off earlier. You can get that much forward. You can get that much back. There's waist rotation. And on this figure, it is pretty squeaky and kind of restricted. But maybe over time it will work itself out of that position. Ball jointed legs go up about this much. That's not bad for how bulky these things are. That's pretty cool. On the back, about that much. They do split about that much. So that's cool. He does have thigh cuts to allow complete rotation if you wanted to. He does have single jointed knee, but at least you can get it to at least 90 degrees. So that's, you know, that's nice that they were able to offer that much. Uh... I don't think there's anything at the boots. I really don't think. That even though they look like they should have a rotation, I'm not getting a presence here. And I really feel like I could break this if I try any harder. So there's nothing at the top of the boots. But the last bit of articulation is the standard hinge joint right here for up and down movement at the feet. And there's the ankle rocker pivot. And it is a very, very nice ankle rocker pivot as you can see. So... Getting this figure to display in many, many options is there. And I mean, this is a really cool figure that you really want to display in your collection in many ways possible against the X-Men. It makes sense. This is an awesome Build-A-Figure, and I cannot praise Hasbro enough for what they have to offer here. I have nitpicks. I always will have nitpicks. If I really want to blackwash it, that's my choice. That's why Hasbro leaves it for me. But I choose not to because I really don't want to mess up this figure because, well, while I am good, I don't think I'll be able to get it right. So anyway, that said, let's wrap this up with some size comparisons. Let's bring in the best of this line. There's Deadpool. Here's Cable. Here's Rogue. Let's bring in Wolverine. Iceman. Here's Havoc. Bringing back in Kitty Pride, who lost Lucky. Unfortunately, he fell over somewhere, but I'll find him later. And the last action figure for shits and giggles, there's Jane. So there you have it, guys. There is the complete series of the Juggernaut Build-A-Figure slash X-Men wave. And I love this wave. It's one of the best waves we've got out of Hasbro's take of the Marvel Legends line as a whole. Will it get better than this? Only time will tell. There is another X-Men wave in the works for 2017. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a while before I'll be able to review those figures. But having said that, I also want to throw in one more size comparison between a Build-A-Figure and another Build-A-Figure. So here's Onslaught. So as you can see, 
Juggernaut might be just a little taller going by my eyes perspective but then again Onslaught from the camera looks like he's actually taller so Onslaught the overall tallest of this wave even though he's not part of this wave at least the headpiece is so he does kind of qualify in a way so you can't blame me for saying that but I've had so much fun with this line but I think it's time to cut it so that being said, that is the end of this video review series. So what do you guys think of this line? Do you agree with me? Is it one of the best that Hasbro has to offer? Do you agree with everything that I've said about these action figures as a whole? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you respect my decisions on some figures? Like, for the instance, that Jean Grey is obviously the worst of this line. Or do you defend this action figure? In which I question why. But hey, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section of this video. So that's going to do it, guys. We are done here. I'm moving on to other toy reviews. So stick around. There'll be more to come. So if you enjoyed this video review series, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't enjoy it, hit the thumbs down button. That is your choice, your preference. And if you haven't already, why not hit that subscribe button for more video reviews and more upcoming Marvel Legend reviews of epic proportions from yours truly, the one and only here at the reviewing station. This is Sonic Ranger signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you whenever you see me.